Hello, and welcome to your Northeast Minnesota labor market update for July of 2021. My name is Carson Gorky, and I am the Northeast Minnesota Regional Labor Market Analyst with the Department of Employment and Economic Development, also known as DEEP. Over the next couple minutes, I'll provide the latest jobs and labor force updates and discuss the new quarterly census of employment and wages release for the first quarter, which provides us with the most detailed look yet into the employment and wage trends in Northeast Minnesota's economic recovery. First, let's take a look at the most recent jobs numbers. The current employment statistics data tool on our website allows you to explore the most recent employment data for the U.S., Minnesota, and five metro areas therein. Employment in the Duluth metro area grew 0.5%, equaling an addition of 600 seasonally adjusted jobs over the month. This may not sound like much, especially since we remain down about 7,000 jobs compared to before the pandemic. But this growth rate represented the largest percent increase since February and was the largest of all the metros in the state in June. Non-seasonally adjusted jobs were also up almost 1,500 over the month. Over the year, Duluth employment is up 5.8%, but that is again compared to June 2020 when employment was just beginning to recover. Total employment remains 6,400 jobs or 4.7% below June 2019 levels. For additional context, we have regained about 14,400, or about 68% of the 21,300 seasonally adjusted jobs that were lost in April and May of last year. Leisure and hospitality grew the most over the month, adding over 1,100 jobs, followed by an additional 400 in state government, 480 in mining, logging, and construction, and 160 in manufacturing. As of June, leisure and hospitality employment finally surpassed the February 2020 pre-pandemic level. However, leisure and hospitality employment remains almost 1,900 short of where it was in June of 2019. Only financial activities, local government, and education and health services lost jobs over the month. Losses in the latter two sectors were likely driven by the decline in education employment that typically coincides with the end of the school year. Now, let's have a peek at the latest labor force and unemployment figures. The unemployment rate for the Northeast region rose for the first time in six months, from 4.2% to 4.8%. Despite the increase, the June 2021 rate is only slightly higher than the 4.4% of June 2019. For context, unemployment typically rises from May to June as the school year ends and many school workers become unemployed, at least temporarily. At the same time, 1,260 workers re-entered the labor force, more than double the number of workers that joined or rejoined the labor force in May. While over 6,100 workers have entered the labor force since last October, there are still about 5,000 fewer people in the labor force than there were in June of 2019, a 3% decline. While the CES numbers are released every month, DEED's Quarterly Census of Employment and Wages, or QCEW program, provides employment and wage information for all industries and in much greater detail. These data show that while the absolute number of jobs was lower in the first quarter compared to the previous three quarters, over the year, the first quarter continued to trend closer to past employment levels, despite being down 7.8%. By comparison, last year's second quarter employment was 15.2% lower than a year previously. The third and fourth quarters were down 9.1% and 7.9% over the year, respectively. At the same time, average wages were up nearly 4% over the year, a continuation of a trend that spiked in the second and fourth quarters of last year. Some of the lower paying industries, such as arts, entertainment, and recreation, administrative support, and retail trade saw above average bumps in their weekly wages. However, others such as accommodation and food services and other services, two of the lowest paying and hardest hit industries during the pandemic, actually saw wages fall, counter to, in some respect, the many stories recently about rising wage pressures in those in other industries. To further muddy the waters, among the two highest paying industries, mining experienced the largest wage growth, while utilities saw the second largest wage decline. Is the wage growth in Q1 2021 attributable to more prevalent job losses at the low end of industry wage scales? Or is there something else at play, such as increased competition among employers for workers? The answer to that question is important because the former points to lingering disproportionate impacts among workers and low wage occupations and industries, while the latter indicates increased worker power. More likely, the answer lies somewhere in between in this dynamic, changing, with the ever evolving recovery. To summarize, the Duluth Metro resumed higher employment growth after slowing in May and June. 
The unemployment rate rose this month as the number of unemployed grew faster than the labor force and the number of employed. The labor force added workers for the third month in a row. A more detailed look at the recovery has emerged with the release of the first quarter QCW numbers. Employment and wage levels continue to improve relative to previous years. However, the recovery has varied significantly by industry. For more information, visit our website or contact me or any of the regional analysts with your questions. We will be happy to help you access and understand the information and data you are looking for. Thank you and have a great day.